This is one of a series of videos produced by the Further Math Support Program for A-Level Mathematics Revision. In this video I'm looking at the AQA D2 specification and it's question 6 from the January 2011 paper. Now the question tells that this is about a company delivering from warehouses P, Q and R to um, its outlets at Y and Z. And the network shows the capacities along each of the possible routes. What we're asked to do is to first of all add in a super source to connect to P, Q and R and a super sync from Y and Z with appropriate values. Um, once we've done that we should then look at the maximum flow along two particular routes, SPUYT and uh, SRVWZ and T, basically on the top and the bottom of our new diagram. We're then to use those maximum flows as our initial flow through the whole network and to use flow augmentation to find the maximum flow from S to T. Once we've got that maximum flow then we are to find a cut which has got uh, a value, a cut capacity with uh, equal to that maximum flow. So in the first part of the question then we're asked to put in a super source S and a super sink. So on the diagram then we need to add in S with directed arcs going to P, Q and R. The size of those are going to be sufficient to allow the flow in, in the following pipe, the so following road rather from so P to U is 12 therefore SP has to be 12 or at least 12 it could be larger. S to Q needs to be 10 and S to R needs to be a total of 8 plus 9 giving you 17 and similarly at the other end super sync T needs to be added in Y to T we've got a total of 8 plus 10 is 18 and from Z to T a total of 7 plus 10 is 17 so that's the super sync and the super source added in. Um, this is just two marks there uh, for each of those, so B1 and B1 mark for getting each end of that correct. The maximum flow along each of those uh, routes that's asked for SPUYT, which is along the top, so we're looking for the smallest number on there and we can see that that's given by that UY there which is 10 so the maximum flow along there is 10 and if we look at the the uh, route from SRV so SR17 then from R to V is 8 and then to W9 um, Z10 and T17 so the smallest of those is the 8 which is there, so that gives us the maximum flow along there. And again, two marks for that B1 and B1. So what we've got so far, uh, just add in that, um, well, we don't actually need to put the super source and super thinking, I suppose, in some ways. at the moment um, but we've got to now put in on the figure 7 we've got to show that flow that we had which was 10 going along the top route and um, 8 along the bottom and we need to show those with a labeling procedure now remember the labeling procedure we're looking at the possible changes so I better put in the S from here. I suppose this was this was 12. 
So if we've got 12 there, then we're putting along a flow of 10. We could possibly add in another 2. So the forward-facing arrow here would be 2, but it could be reduced by 10. And likewise, on the top here, so again, this one is going to be a possible increase of 2, decrease of 10. And then from S to, uh, for U to Y, we can't increase anymore. It's actually saturated. That's the constriction on that particular path, wasn't it? So, but it could be reduced by 10. Then from Y to T, uh, from Y to T here was uh, a total of 18. So we have the possibility of increasing that by 8 or reducing it by 10. So that's that one route in there. The other route, which has got 8 on it, from S to R, um, was 17. And so we've got the possibility of increasing that by 9 or reducing it by the 8 that's in there. From R to V, this is the one where the constriction is, so that's 0 and 8. V to W could be increased by 1 and the reduction by 8, obviously. W to Z is 10, so we've got the possibility of increasing that by 2 or reducing it by the 8. And finally, from Z to T, that is uh, 17 there, so we have the possibility there of increasing it by 9 from the 8 or reducing it by 8. All of the others at the moment have um, uh, flows um, which are zero in them. So for putting those onto the diagram, there were two marks, again, both uh, B marks. Right, the next stage is to use flow augmentation. Um, so we're looking now for paths through the network where we can possibly put an increase. And remember that um, we've got no flow at all from S to Q at the moment. And we have the possibility there of therefore increasing in that direction from S to Q. Uh, the other areas that we can, we can look at is when we get to U. Here we can go down to X and via Y. Um, so we can certainly increase going to Q here and then via U perhaps from S and also going from S to R and then on to W would be a potential. But we've already got some of the paths which are saturated. So it might help in some ways just to, just to mark those saturated ones in at the moment. We can't go along that arc um, or increase along that arc there. Um, so those are the two blocks that we've put in. Otherwise, we've got potential to increase the flow. Well, there are a variety of different things we could do here. So, But let's start with this one from S to P along the top. So if we go from S to P and then from P to U, then we've got to go with um, two units, obviously, because that's um, at that stage anyway. And we can see, can we take those two units further? Well, certainly we can go from U to X um, and then to Y and to T. So we're going to add in SPU, then to X to Y to T, and we can add in two units along there. So what's going to happen then is that these values here will become zeros and the backward flow is going to increase by two. So remember that the forward flow is going to reduce or the forward number is going to reduce rather and the backward flow increase. Now that's produced a flow in ux of two. 
So there's still the potential there of increasing that by 6. And also, if we go on to um, x to y, we've got a flow of 2, so it could be reduced by 2 or increased by 6. And from y to t, we've got the potential now of increasing that by a, another 6 or reducing it by the flow which is now in that um, section of 12. So that's one route that uh, could be increased. We've now saturated the um, arc here, so we can no longer go along these. So we're now left with from S to R and from S to um, Q. So let's look at S to Q first of all, and see what we can do with that. Tracing through the diagram at the top here, S to Q is 10, Q to V 10. We could then go to um, U and then X, Y and T. So if we look at our bottom diagram, then the smallest increase, or sorry, the largest increase we can do there is 6. So if we look at the diagram from U to X is 6, from X to Y is 6, and also we can increase from Y to T, the value of 6. So we're going to go S, Q, V, and then U, X, Y, T, with a value of 6. So putting those onto the diagram, that's going to be 6 backwards and a possible extra 4 there. So we can still increase that one by 4 and reduce by 6. Then from V to U, uh, the capacity is 7, so we've got the potential of an extra 1 going in that direction. And 6 backwards. From U to X, we've now saturated that, so that's going to become 0 and that will go up by 6 to 8. And likewise in x to y, that's now saturated. So that's 0, and that goes up to 8. And we've increased the flow in y to t by um, 6. So this one also is saturated, and it's now got a flow of total of 18. So the 12 plus the 6. And once again, just showing the saturated ones then, now we can, th we can see that we, we can't in change from U to X, or from X to Y, from Y to T. So if we come down there, we're, we're, we're really now uh, left with going from S um, to Q to V and coming via W. We can increase that by 1. But let's first of all um, look at going from S to R, um, which is an alternative. So I'm going to look at S to R this time and see what we can do from there. So from S to R, we can't go then to V, but we can go to W. So let's investigate that. S to R, we've got a potential increase of uh, 9. Then from R to W, it's got a capacity of 9, so we could keep increasing by 9. We could then go, the largest one, um, from W to X is 5. And then from X to Z, we could also increase by 5, and from Z to T. So 5 is possible if we go S, R, um, then from R to W, and then X, Z, T, and that is 5. So increasing things by 5, remember the backward one re, um, is going to increase, that's 13, forward decreases, so we now get 13 and 4. Uh, in, in here, it's the backward one, the flow, which we've just added in, is 5, it's got a capacity of 9, so we could possibly increase by 4. In W2X, uh, we've used up the full capacity, so it could be reduced by 5, but it's now saturated, so that's 0. From 
x to z the capacity is 7 with a flow of 2 so uh, sorry flow of 5 so therefore we could increase by 2 or reduce by 5 and finally from z to t we've increased the flow by 5 so that becomes 13 and the potential increase is now 4 and again we've we've produced one more saturated route so just marking that in there it is from w to x so we're now left with this path along the bottom s r w z t and if we go from s r w z t we can see that the smallest uh, potential increase there is 2 which is in w to z so we can change that by 2 so doing that the 13 flow now increases to 15 the flow 5 is now 7 potential increasing by 2 this now becomes saturated so it's now got a flow of 10 and finally we're left with the flow here of uh, 15 with potential of increasing by 2 so we've produced yet another saturated arc marking that on our diagram we can now see that we're, we're actually finished because we can't pass any of these saturation points here um, it's it, it, it's blocking I think in all routes so then possibly there's one extra let's just check it out um, now just looking again if we go from S to R we could go from R to W and then there was the possibility perhaps of going from W to V and then from V to U but then we're saturated from U to X so really all routes are now barred so we've completed the task um, we are then asked to uh, find a cut with a, a value which is equal to the maximum flow so first of all we should um, find what is the maximum flow well the maximum flow is either the flow that's going into t so if we look at that we've got a total of 15 and 18 so we can see that this these are the flows these backward arrows the 15 or uh, or the 18 there alternatively we could get it from what's coming out of s 12 6 and the 15 or of course the other way of doing it would be simply to add up the flows that we had the 10 and the 8 that we started with and then the numbers that we've augmented and all of those give us a value of 33 so we simply need to say that the maximum flow is equal to 33 and we've got we're asked to find a cut which has got a same value as that now to get the cut you've got to look at this top diagram the the first one with the capacities on it so we're looking at a, a cut which is equal to 33 but having marked in our saturated roots then that helps so we can look at the saturated path that we've got and find a cut because the cut the maximum uh, flow will go uh, through saturated uh, pipes and the, the min cut will be along those and so looking at the diagram you can see that um, from u to y u to x wx and wz gives us a way of putting in a cut it comes down here comes round so what I'm doing there is is sort of uh, mirroring the, the the cut through these saturated arcs here and that gives a good way of um, locating the cut that you need and that cut there has got a capacity of 33 10 uh, plus the 5 the 8 and the 10 
Okay, there we are. And the question finished. Uh, the marking there, oh, quite quite uh, complex little bit of marking come up. There were two marks allocated for uh, the actual routes and their flows. Two marks for completing this diagram correctly. So it ha it's what they call a correct solution only. In other words, you must have exactly the same diagram as I've indicated there with those same values on there. And then uh, that, that was the four marks for doing the flow augmentation. And then there was a single mark for finding the cut. Right, that's the end of that question. You can find solutions to other questions at www.furthermaths.org.uk.